it is, what it do, what it is, lads and ladettes. It's your boy Dakota Griswold of Gamers, Nerds, and Geeks United. Welcome back to Yesterday Today. This is the show where I bring you some of the biggest gaming news you may have missed from yesterday, today. And yes, today is the big day, big day, absolutely. Crisis comes the Nintendo Switch. No, we got the big Xbox game showcase coming and I couldn't be more excited. Yes, of course, Crisis really is coming to the Nintendo Switch today, but I can't wait to hear about how good it is or how good it isn't on the Nintendo Switch and if it needs some patches or whatever. Really hoping it doesn't need any patches and it wasn't rushed, but I am really excited about the Xbox Game Showcase. I am mostly excited about Halo and a bunch of games that we have no idea about yet. But we're more gonna, we're gonna talk about more on Halo in a bit later. And we're also going to talk about the fact that if you like Jet Set Radio and you really want a sequel and how you can actually get that itch scratch pretty soon. And we're also going to talk about how both Persona 5R and Final Fantasy 14 hit certain milestones. milestones. So why don't y'all go ahead and while you're here, hit that subscribe button if you're new and scroll all the way up to all so you know when your boy is posting. Okay, so now let's get right into the appetizers. So yesterday, Team Reptile, the, the people who made uh, Megabyte Punch and Lethal League Blaze. Now, Lethal League Blaze is a game that I could actually vouch for. Um, shout out to my cousin Jabari who took those beatdowns in that game and took it on the chin like a champ. He will then challenge me to Super Smash Brothers, which I'm not that good at. I'm good at escaping, but I'm not great on the offense. But they made Lethal League Blaze, and it's the same composer who actually made Jet Set Radio. And his name is Hideki Naganuma. And he is actually composing more music for a game called Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. It literally looks like a new version of Jet Set Radio. It was just announced yesterday on Twitter. And once again, that's by Team Reptile. And the game is set to come out sometime this year, focusing on single player which is awesome. If you want to scratch that Jet Set Radio itch and you can't do anything but to boot up your old Xbox or your Dreamcast, well, here is a way to do that. Now, moving on to the next. Now, here's, here's something very interesting. I'm not the hugest Pokemon fan, but I do like fighting games. So, if you haven't played Pokemon Tournament and you happen to have Nintendo Switch Online, July 29th, just on July 29th, you can play it for free. Actually, no. Between July 29th and August 4th, you can play it for free. Absolutely free. And I like that Nintendo does this from time to time. Kind of the PlayStation Gold days of play. I mean, PlayStation Gold. I just mix both of them. PlayStation, PlayStation, uh, wow, I can't even say it. PlayStation Plus and Xbox Games with Gold days of, days of play. And they're giving you a free few days. And I suggest that if you haven't played this game and you're curious about a fighting game, absolutely give this a try because why not play as Pikachu in a Lucha Libre suit whose one of their moves is a, <laughs> is a Stone Cold Stunner and then jumping off the top rope with a somersault and a frog splash. I absolutely love this game. It actually holds a special place in my heart. It's actually a very, very fun fighting game. Now let's move on to the next piece of the appetizer and Dreams just yesterday released a VR update. Now, Dreams just couldn't get any wackier. Dreams already is, is so many awesome creations, and I haven't gotten a chance to get into Dreams as of yet. And I'm actually very concerned if I'll ever be able to get into it, and especially this year, and it's released calendar of games, but kudos to Dreams, they now have VR. So I can't wait to just go on YouTube and find out some of the creations that people are making, especially in VR. I'm very curious to them. Shout out to Dreams, shout out to the Dreams community who just keep on pushing and I just can't wait to see more that comes out of this. Now, let's get in to some Final Fantasy. They, they just went across a huge, huge mark. 20 million players. Now this game has been out on consoles 10 years maybe? 10 years. And then 20 million, that is nothing to sneeze at, honestly. And they just keep updating it. And you know, I, while I'm not a fan, I know a good few, of pe a good amount of people who absolutely love this game, who play it regularly. And this is coming hot off the heels. They're getting ready to play, have a new expansion. Their expansion, Reflections and Crystal, comes out Tuesday, August 11th. So I hope all 20 million of y'all really, really enjoyed it. And I hope 
that Square Enix's services can handle it. Now, now jumping from out of the appetizers and jumping straight into the meat and potatoes, and we're trying to get something that sticks to your ribs in one of my favorite games, games that I've only played 10 hours of, but I absolutely love, a game that kind of changed my look on turn-based RPGs, and that is Persona 5. Persona 5R has officially passed 1.4 million units sold. And the franchise itself went across 13 million units sold. Now, Persona 4 Golden just came out on Steam about a month ago, I want to say, and it's already passed 500k. Just to let you know that people want to play Persona on other systems. Nintendo Switch, I'm looking at you. And just in Japan and Asia in general, 480k in Persona 5 Scramble. You know, the game we're waiting to be localized and brought over to the Nintendo Switch. I'm just curious. And then, on top of that, Persona 5, the base game that came out on PS3 and then also came out on PS4, has sold 3.2 million. So, honestly, big shout out to Persona. Persona is one of those games I'm not going to front. It's about like 125 hours almost, Persona 5R, and it has extra content. I'm probably never going to finish it, or I'm not going to finish it for a very, very long time. Those are one of those games that... I just go, I play five to ten hours of it here, and then go and play another big game that I can really get into because I'm not set out to play uh, these huge JRPGs like that and, and these really huge time sinkers. Even though I think it's really good, but honestly, I really wish it was actually in, uh, it was actually on the Nintendo Switch because, especially in a time like this where there's none of the really, really huge games, especially for my taste, on the Nintendo Switch right now. I would probably play the crap out of this game in between other games and even in transition when I'm going to work because here in New York, we're slowly opening back up and people are going to work. Like now, today, unfortunately, I will be at work and I won't be able to cover certain things more on that later. But listen, Persona 5 are 1.3 million. That's nothing to sneeze at, and I'm very happy to hear about it, and I can't wait to hear more about Persona. Let us enjoy Persona 5 R, and maybe in the next year or two, we'll hear something about Persona 6. Honestly, I want Persona 4 Golden on the Nintendo Switch as well. I want more Persona. I love the games. They have so much style, so much uh, the, the, as far as art style, and just the moment. I literally, you know when you suspend your game on your PS4 and then cut it off so you can just pick up where you play? No. I quit it every time just so i can hear that theme music every time the music in this game is so amazing and then every time i go to battle i still put my controller down to dance because the last surprise boots up and i absolutely love it but that's enough about persona 5 even though you should get it i got the steel case version so even though you should get it let's move on to the next story and the bioware basically confirmed yesterday that hey we're still making Dragon Age, so don't worry about it. And Mark Dara, he, he said on Twitter, I realize that most of you are here for Dragon Age news, and there hasn't been a lot of that lately. Let me just run down some things I, I can say. We are working on the next Dragon Age, confirm. Yes, we are working from home. Working from home is hard. We are making progress, and of course, we already know that COVID-19 has been slowing down a lot of production for a lot of things. Uh, it has been a slow year for Nintendo, namely, but hey, we have no idea what's going on with Dragon Age. We haven't actually heard anything. It was, it was We got this teaser back at the, one of these EA shows where we was wondering if it was something from, from Bioware where it was like some tree, it looked like it was in the Dark Ages or something like that. It was just a lot of speculation there, but it was never confirmed. But it's good to know that we are still getting Dragon Age and they're still going to be releasing it and it's being worked on. So, now, let's move on to something different and better. Uh, well, Ubisoft actually said something. They're actually, Ubisoft is actually in the news for something other than the misconduct. And, you know, I was getting really, really tired of reporting on it, but it has to be said. But, you know, remember when 2K was like, yo, we're going to be selling our games for $70 next gen? Well, Ubisoft said, nah, for now, we're still going to sit it. We're still going to sit at 60 and I'm And I'm very happy about that. And, listen, we're already paying $60. That's close to $100. $70 is just even closer to $100. 
And a lot of us are playing $70 just for steel case versions, special editions, with stuff that really doesn't even come, a lot of stuff that doesn't really come with the game. But let's be real here. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is going to come out and it's going to have at least three editions like they all do. But the base game, $60, no problem. But if you want some of that extra stuff, steel case and all that good stuff, you're going to have to pay upwards of $70, $80 and maybe more. But it's good to know that they're trying to reassure us so that... Basically, Valhalla, Watch Dogs, and whatever else they might have come out, have coming out, Gods and Monsters, things like that, will be $60. Maybe if they get up off this engine that's very dated, that's been on PS3, Xbox 360 era, they'll hit us with the $70 price tag. We'll see. Maybe the next Assassin's Creed in the next two years, I want to say, comes out, and maybe the next Watch Dogs comes out, it'll be an updated engine. Now, move on to the next story. So... We are getting Yakuza Like a Dragon sometime this year, but it's coming on PS5 later. It's coming to Xbox and PC first. Now, that's something I thought I'd never say. That's something I thought I'd never read. But because Xbox is trying uh, is trying to get over, uh, you know, basically get over with the, the fans over in Japan and in Asia, well, this is some of the deals that they have to strike, and I, and I appreciate it. Maybe we can get some Persona on Xbox. Not saying I would be a big fan of that because I have it on my PS4, that's fine. But I would absolutely love it on my Nintendo Switch. But they need to get more of these big games, these Japanese games, over on in, over on the Xbox and in, in Japan so they can sell more because it doesn't really do very, very well over there. They were selling it for a D, as like a DVD player at one point just to get the stock out. It's really, really sad. But Yakuza Like a Dragon, albeit turn-based RPG, never played a Yakuza game, it actually looks fun, admittedly. And honestly, I think it's going to be on Game Pass because the Game Pass is just nailing everything that they're putting their hands on. So if it's on Game Pass, I'd probably give it a whirl. And I'm, I'm just happy to see that Xbox is actually taking this type of stuff serious. But let's get into it. And we were talking about this, the conference today, the Xbox Games Conference. But first, they released the Xbox game. You see, I'm getting all giddy, right? The Xbox... The, the, the box art for Halo Infinite. And for some reason, Chin Scratcher, it looks very similar to the original Halo Combat Evolved box. What do you think that means? I'm thinking that maybe it's some type of soft reboot and maybe we're gonna go back to original Halo and for like it's gonna be in a semi-open world because the original Halo, when every level and every mission, it felt like these really big, huge open worlds, even though it wasn't. And maybe kind of reminded me of, what, what do I want to say, Metro Exodus. You know, when you, you take the train to a stop and you have a mission and you have a lot of this area that you can really explore, but it's just piece by piece. Now that I can actually get with. Uh, I'm, I'm not big on a lot of these big open world games because of the distractions and I, I never really get finished. But Halo... So, let, but Halo could do it, and it's actually fun. But let's also talk about the fact that on his left hand, Master Chief, he has a grappling hook. Now, Halo is pretty fast-paced, and you can jump like ten freaking feet into the air. <laughs> but it's 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 wild to me because we get to finally see maybe a grappling hook. We already got the boosters, and I believe. I think the boosters started in Halo 4, and then the sprinting also started in Halo 4, but more mobility. Sprinting at one point in Halo was just like, yo, we got sprinting. So now we got the sprinting and maybe the sliding, and then imagine throwing a grappling hook in there. Makes Master Chief a lot more unstoppable. And just, first of all, the box art is absolutely beautiful, but then when you look at Master Chief's visor, it looks like what might be the villain of the game, and he's, he's called the Banished, and he happens to be a brute. Now, I forget, I'm forgetting his name, but... Listen, Master Chief, it actually looks like Master Chief he kind of returned to his original uh, his original Spartan armor. And hey, listen, I, I couldn't get more excited about it. I couldn't be more, I couldn't tell you guys more about it. Now, as I was going to say about the Xbox game showcase, showcase I will actually be at work. So uh, my coverage will be delayed. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to, you know, because I'll be really busy, really busy tonight when I come home. I'm actually going on Xbox Live with, not Xbox Live, on Instagram Live with Miss Saida Johnson. And we're talking about something completely unrelated to video games. And I will be sitting, putting that in a leak below just in case you want to talk about self-healing and things like that. Um, this is completely outside of video games and I'm trying to really broaden my horizons here. But 
I won't be able to do the showcase reaction right away. When I get home from work, I'll be able to gather my notes and get prepared and, you know, single dad. So after the kids go to sleep, I'll be able to do some work here and still record some things. And don't worry, I will have the Grizz reacts coming to you straight up on YouTube. But I am so excited. I don't know how excited y'all are. Let me know down in the comments below how excited you are, lads and letters. I'm ecstatic. Growing up as an Xbox boy, even though I had all systems, but growing up as an Xbox guy, I absolutely, I'm absolutely excited. Shout out to Persona. Shout out to Final Fantasy and Ubisoft. Shout out to y'all for still letting y'all give it a get, keep it real. Like, yo, we're gonna keep it at sixty dollars for a while. But lads and letters, that is it for this video. Go ahead and hit the like button. If not, hit the dislike. It's all good. And if you haven't subscribed for some reason, even though I asked you to, go ahead and subscribe and scroll all the way up to also. You know when your boy's posted. Please share this video and encourage other people to like, share, and subscribe. But until then, this video, lads and ladders, thank you so much for watching. This video is finito.